The aim of this segment is to add to the documentaries. We're not going to repeat what's in them. In the documentaries, we've covered the mainstream way to find gold, creeks, gold panning, sluicing, cradling, and Job has added to that with his YouTube channel so you can get the normal way to find gold. But there is a way that, well, is not normally out there, and we have to look at it for a good consideration. I've been asked thousands of times, and I bet it's up to the millions with you, where is gold and what's the best way to find it? I love the old saying, gold is where you find it, and it wasn't invented by me. It was a movie title, 1932, and later, after that movie came out, experts decided it was the most correct representation, true representation, of how the American gold rush has started as depicted by Hollywood. So gold is where you find it, name of the movie, is where you find it, opens up a board of different possibilities. And one of them, again, comes from Hollywood. The old movie, Paint Your Wagon. A couple of unsuccessful gold diggers in a pub, drowning their sorrows and notice bits of gold falling out of gold diggers' pockets and going through the floorboards. They come up with an idea. <gasps> we'll tunnel under the hotels and mine that lost gold. And it's not far from the truth. That sounds almost identical to what happened in Hill End with the Chinese general store. Beryl Woolard told me firsthand that accidentally the Chinese store burnt down in the 1930s depression and all the kind locals came in with picks, shovels, wheelbarrows. Ah, uh, good volunteers. <laughs> And cradles and gold pans to the yeah, creek. <laughs> they were going to clean it up properly. Yeah, they got every bit of last little lost gold that was underneath that. Amazing. Truck. There's still a depression in the ground there now. It's sunken. It's covered up the crime scene a bit. Yeah. But you can say, ah, that's exactly where the shop was because there's the bit they took out. That's where the counter was. Oh, that's right. And, of course, it wasn't just that one. Down on the river, there was a Dai Yong's general store down on the Turon. Really? Yeah, it was built out of red bricks. Huh. Bricks were made on site out of the red clay. Right, that was a common thing that happened back then too. And, of course, pretty obvious oh. to see after rain, a glint of gold. Oh, you're not joking. Look at that. And, of course, the gold diggers went, hmm, I think this place better burn down too. <laughs> and it did. Yeah. Oh. And the bricks went with it, no doubt. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Softened in the fire. Oh. Easier for gold panning that yeah. way. So it's not just your traditional places that you find gold. Couldn't count the amount of times a dog has found gold. Like the I've cat. heard of two stories about dogs or people out walking their dogs and they've found gold. A better one than that is when the dog digs it up for you. Oh. The cat told me half a day in the creek, he actually had a little um, chihuahua, yeah. and it was on the top bank, he said. Yeah. When it saw him knocking off and packing up, it got really excited. They do. Start to dance around and scratch at the ground. When he got up there, there was a two-ounce nugget. Oh, Best yeah. day's fozzigging he'd ever had. <laughs> I wish we could train dogs to smell gold like they do those truffles. But Look, I, I shouldn't even tell this story, but it's true. I we'll, love ca him. we'll call him Mr. X. Uh -huh. Didn't trust his daughters. Told the brother-in-law, oh, I've got a kilo of gold buried in the backyard. And he did. He said, don't tell your wife. When he died... Jack, we'll call him, yeah. <laughs> dug up the gold. Fair dinkum. Didn't tell the wife. Well. Buried it in his backyard. Right. They changed address. <laughs> they moved into a suburban house. Yeah. He didn't tell his wife. Oh. He buried it again. I mean, he didn't put it in a cupboard. Yeah. He didn't put it under a floor. No, he buried it in the backyard. Kind of did the stereotypical thing. <laughs> After he died, they're reading out the will, and there's a little note. Oh, you're joking. Oh, I buried a kilo of gold in the backyard. Did belong to your father. Sorry. Sounds like the best treasure hunt ever. Oh, treasure hunt isn't the word. He didn't say where. Oh, no. Suburban backyard is now dug up by a backhoe. <laughs> Proof is in the digging. They yeah. found a kilo of oh, gold. Oh, well, at least they found it. Oh, and it happens all the time. But Sherbet and the cat are digging foundations, formwork for a cement path to Lib Trevina's house. Right. Found a tobacco tin. Really? Full of gold. 
And who says manual labour doesn't pay? Yeah, oh, I love gold stories and finding them. I love it. Can't count the amount of people that have found gold when they haven't been looking for it, like that recent house restoration in your land. Yeah. Pull up the floorboards and there it is. People, they leave the little notes like, oh, we did leave the gold here. But they were untrusting of banks because of the 1890s bank crash and the 1930s depression. They felt the safest way to hold their money was in its original state like they hadn't handed it in 30 days of finding it. <laughs> <laughs> they decided they'd bury it so they could find it again. Yeah, well, get all the fun out of it twice times over. Heaps of tobacco tins yeah. and heaps of places where you would not expect to find it. One of my favourites is when dredge first came out. You were just talking about the bloke that's got the three, uh, the three oh, inch, yeah. I should say, we dredge. Came. The Turon River Bridge, yeah. straight section of the river. No gold traps, yeah. smooth bottom. The bloke gets a dredge, and this is uh, late 1970s, All goes right. down there. Everyone goes, he's still going to find gold there. Yeah. <laughs> he found 24 ounces. How did he do that? 24 ounces? In as many seconds, one piece was 17 and a half ounces. I saw it shaped like a pear. Really? They reckon he actually came up with the dredge clutching his heart. He was having, thought he was having a heart attack. I wonder why he got the goggles on. <laughs> it, it, it makes it bigger, doesn't yeah, it? We've yeah. done that. It, it, it magnifies it. But when he brought the gold up, it was like, oh, where'd you find it? There was a bug hole, an anomaly in yeah, the right. river bottom, and it had just acted like this little bit where anything that went over the top yep. slipped in out Perfect of the current trap. And I said to Frankie Cole, why'd they find that there? Oh, he said the road used to go there. Ugh. And that made me think, and so many gold finds have been where there used to be a church there, there used to be a school there, there used to be a building there, so no one dug under the building. Yeah, right. Uh, at, on that site, I mean yeah, virgin yeah. ground under Makes the site. Sense, yeah. So a good place for metal detecting is obviously underneath where a building was where no one was able to dig because a gold field is just that. It is an area that, like a football field yep. or a cricket field, and in that area there's gold, and it doesn't normally follow the rules. Okay. And it can be anywhere. Yeah, and there's, sort of a, there's sort of a reason for that. In the introduction to this YouTube channel, I used the word epigenetic. It's a big one. It applies to something that comes along that's not part of the original source. Okay. In other words, the original countries here, gold deposition came in later. Yeah. So gold is epigenetic, and that scattering of gold coming in literally put it in all sorts of places mm -hmm. that people don't normally except as being gold bearing it just because of erosion yeah. i mean you you were asking earlier on about surfacing yeah well with the gold panning tours i'm always digging in the creek digging in the creek and the one time you took over for me because i was shopping in town you went up into the hills and came back with gold <laughs> uh, which was to me mind-blowing well i tell you what you can get more than that rabbit burrows yeah wombat holes okay ants nests yeah you can go to an area or just Beautiful, clean clay. When you look at the ant's nest, it's got iron stone, quartz, pebbles. Signs of that gold area. No, they've gone down a mine for you. Oh, my Lord. They've brought it up. So you yeah. should scrape the ant's nest and be surprised what you come up with. Yeah. But more than that, you see erosion. Eats away the ground, washes away the lighter stuff. So you get a shingling of iron stone and quartz on the surface. Okay. So you, what I did with the tourists I took care of for you is I went down there and said, oh, that surface is good. Use the pelican pick sideways and just scrape that much off the top of the surface. Yep. yep. You'd be surprised the amount of gold. My best way of getting gold after a thunderstorm when I was younger was when Hill End had common cattle. Yep. The cattle used to go down to the creek, and they'd always use the same path. Their hooves would chew up the ground. Yeah, they're not like And you'd get, you'd get a trench. Yeah. You'd literally get a trench going down, but it was chewed up material. You get a thunderstorm, light stuff washes away. They've powdered it, heavier stuff behind. I'd always go into a cow track and scrape that little spot that goes to the creek. Okay. And often I would pick up a, a small nugget. And again, where gold is that shouldn't be, Sherbet, one of the best gold diggers about, He'd go into Golden Gully. Yeah. He wasn't metal detecting in the creek. Yeah. Supposedly, these big yellow walls in Golden Gully haven't got gold in them. Sherbert said, you'd be surprised. Yeah. He said, I just metal detect the walls. Yeah. He said, and occasionally I come up with a piece that's just in the – when no one's going to think of looking yeah. for Fair it. Yeah, income. It is a matter of gold is where you find it. Mm -hmm. You just have to go and look 
and be vigilant and hope that the area you've got is pay dirt. Persistence is key and a lot of luck, as you said at the beginning. 99%. Well, we shouldn't say that. It just yeah. feels like it when you spend all day and you it find does. very little. It does. Um, yeah. But uh, let's say a big percentage of finding gold is luck. The other bit is the hard manual yeah. labour. Just keeping, keeping persistent.